So getting ready for Texas A&M. Um, first off, I want to uh, talk about Outlive a little bit. Um, folks can go online at outlive.com to get their t-shirts. Um, my, you know, my dream is to walk out to the arena on Saturday and see every single person in the building with an Outlive t-shirt on. Um, I'm going to make this announcement now that um, I'm going to uh, empower Marlene with the finances to purchase tickets for our media. So even you guys can sit up there and, and have an Outlive t-shirt on. Um, I can afford it. Um, the other thing I, I we're doing, my family and I are so blessed. Seventh year in a row now, uh, we'll be purchasing the tickets for all the students, excuse me, the t-shirts for all the students. Um, so uh, knowing that, that all, the, all, the, all the funds that we, we raise go to cancer patients in the state of Alabama who are battling cancer, um, and are having a hard time paying the bills. Um, as you guys know, cancer is not a one-time surgery or not, not a one-time treatment. There's chemo, there's radiation, there's, there's sickness, there's missed work. Um, the whole family can get affected by it. So um, I think we'll set a record this year with how much money we'll raise through the sale of t-shirts and, and just through just general contributions um, uh, to the Bruce Pearl Families Foundation. So we're good. Okay. Um, college game day being here is exciting for the second time in three years. Um, and uh, when ESPN could go anywhere in the country uh, to, uh, to televise college basketball, that day they, cho they have chosen Auburn. And um, so we are, uh, uh, we feel fortunate and blessed. And um, we're looking forward to having Reese and Jay LaFonso and Seth in town this weekend. Um, Texas A&M comes in, uh, having beaten us five out of the last six uh, uh, times. Uh, obviously, it's been a tough matchup for us. Um, um, this Texas A&M team started 15-2 and two and 4-0 in our conference, and uh, they've lost seven in a row. Um, Three of those losses were on the road to Arkansas, LSU, and Tennessee, and one, you know, last possession loss to Kentucky. Um, they just lost Tuesday night to LSU again at home. Um, you know, you could it's – the, it's the league we play in. And so it's really not about having lost those games. It's like, look who they've lost them to. And the scoring margins on all of them are have been fairly close, um, or at least on most of them. Um, Texas A&M is in the one of only three SEC squads that rank in the top six in the league, all games in scoring offense at 73.5 points a game and a defense 66 points. So that's why those six, that those two numbers, that's why they, they've just been in, in, in a lot of games. Um, they mix up pressure, change in defenses. Um, they turn you over a lot. They turn you over by, by trapping and uh, they do a good job off those traps. They double team the post. Not everybody does. They just do a few things that not everybody does in the league, which makes it a, a challenging preparation. Um, the, uh, uh, you know, coming back from Arkansas, we recognize that Arkansas played, you know, well. Note made big shots. Um, it was a great environment. Um, and um, um, they played great defense, which, uh, uh, was part of the reason we had some offensive struggles. We turned it over too much. We didn't get back in transition uh, as well as we should have. Um, and um, um, uh, and we missed we missed too many free throws, and they made uh, 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 almost, almost all of theirs. So you combine all that, and it's an overtime loss. And uh, uh, But our deal is the same as it's always been. Um, we got to try to get better and see if we can win. Um, Leading up to the Arkansas game, you know, we had, uh, um, um, you know, just lost, just to be just one real close at Georgia. So um, obviously, you know, right now we, we've got, uh, we've got, continue, got some work to do to play better. Um, so uh, Zepp Jasper um, is, is uh, 
uh, could potentially play Saturday. Uh, we'll see how he does this week, but there's a chance he could get back to uh, light practice today. So that's a possibility. Uh, but there's, we'll know more in the next couple of days. Um, that's my update. Questions? All right. Question from Bill Cameron. Hey, Bruce, I was going to ask about Zep, but, uh, but talk about the response from the team after the, after the loss at Arkansas. And, and who are the guys that uh, you look to as, as leaders out there? That's a great question. Um, you know, I think the, the response was get to the next play. Um, Let's get to the next game. Uh, nobody was pointing fingers. Um, um, we'll see how we respond, you know, from the loss. Um, but the bottom line is, you know, we've got to execute better offensively. Uh, we've got to continue to get better looks. Um, we need more guys to be able to break the defense down um, off the bounce um, and, and putting too much put, – put, uh, you know, Wendell had seven turnovers, but I put him in a lot of situations um, to score and to make plays. And so that was, you know, a lot of that is just on me. And, and I've got to, um, we, we need to share the responsibility of, of breaking the opponent down, uh, particularly off the bounce uh, from, from others. So we're not relying so much on Wendell. All right, question from Nathan King. Bruce, you talked about after the Georgia game, that short turnaround to Tuesday and that you might limit practice. Do you feel like that was at all a factor against Arkansas? And then how much does the difference does it make now with you guys having a longer break before Saturday? Well, I thought we were – well, you know, they shot 34%. They only made 23 field goals. Um, you know, that's, that's typically a pretty good formula. My, my guess is if you look at it, they probably haven't had a home game all year where they only made 23 field goals. Uh, so I think the rest was was very helpful. Um, uh, the, the offensive execution, uh, I don't know how much that uh, you could blame that on the, the rest. I, I just don't know. Um, and then uh, came back from Arkansas yesterday was their players day off. And today will be our first practice. All right, question from Justin Hokinson. Hey, Bruce, is there anything from, from the two losses this year that you think are similar or are they completely different in, in kind of how they played out? Um, I mean, I know it's a, it's a hard, it's a tough question. Every game is yeah. different. You know, um, I, I think that there are a couple of common denominators. Um, you know, we look, we got to play better to not be in that situation late, but, you know, Late, um, you know, we, we with about a minute to go on a five point lead, you know, we fouled and we fouled them a couple times late, um, and we fouled UConn late. Now, uh, you can watch that last play when the little kid uh, is it Cole, who the little point guard for Connecticut, Zeb Jasper is guarding him, RJ Cole maybe, the little guard for the little point guard from UConn. Uh, anyways, they ain't nothing there. And uh, and they sent him to the line to tie it with about whatever, a couple seconds. So so we fouled late. That really helped. I mean, that was, you know, Arkansas made 11 free throws in one basket in overtime. So we fouled them too much. And uh, we fouled UConn too much. They went to the line a lot too. So that was a common denominator. And we had a couple of, we had a couple of free throw checkouts misses late that were both uh, factors in that game. So, and I think you could look at those two things um, as kind of common denominators, but, uh, but look, um, we've been down double digits four times on the road, actually make that five and we're four and one. And, you know, obviously we'd look at that game in Arkansas and say, Hey, we had, we had our chances. We gave ourselves a chance. Um, so, but like I've been telling you, know, you guys know, and we've talked about it, you know, when you're down 10 into Kentucky and then Ty Ty gets hurt and then you're down five times by double digits on a row. That's, we're going to work on some things and hopefully we'll get better and hopefully 
by making a few more open shots and continuing to guard, we can get peaking. But this is kind of who we've been. But we've, we've, we've won all of those except the UConn close games. Question from Nubias Wilburn. Hey, Bruce, how's it going today, brother? Hey, Nubias, how you doing? Hey, good, man. Bless and highly favorite. Um, from there, you mentioned the fouls, and, and after the game, Wendell talked about playing defense without fouling. Is it moving your feet more? Is it different situations? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Is yeah. it stuff like, is it stuff you can control, or how do you kind of? Well, I mean, I mean, I mean, like guarding your yard a little bit. Um, and um, uh, trust in the help behind you, either to block a shot or take a charge, but making them make a tough two. And uh, that would be probably it. You know, in other words, like challenge shots without fouling. Stay in front of your man without fouling. And if, and if he goes by, you trust your help and make him, make him finish. Don't, don't. Don't bail them out with a foul. All right. Uh, next question from Justin Ferguson. Bruce, you talked earlier about how AM's won most of the last few games in this series. Uh, I know Buzz has only been there for the last couple of years, but is there something about his teams or something about the way they play or something you see out of this team um, that, that kind of leads to that? Well, Billy Kennedy was there prior to Buzz, and I've played Buzz now. What, I played him three times? Is that right? Two or three times? Um, Three times. We have I played him three times, so I think maybe maybe we won once, and I don't know. But this is this is Bud's third season, so I guess um, I guess I don't know. Um, beat him once when I was at Marquette, and uh, when I was at Tennessee, and uh, possibly he's beaten me the two times that they've been at Texas A&M. Yeah, absolutely. Buzz credit. Um, uh, uh, we, the, the best one I think was the, was the team that finished second in the league later, late in the year, uh, they came up here and, and uh, beat uh, the team with the seniors and uh, um, Isaac. And so, uh, um, um, and then last year we went down there pretty shorthanded um, and played a really good game. Actually got a chance to, uh, had a chance to win. It was tied. Uh, and um, um, Gordon made a big bucket late. So uh, we played him two close games and lost to him twice, I guess, with, with Coach Williams. All right, question from Mark Murphy. Bruce, you guys are up to uh, plus 6.3 in rebound margin in SEC games. Um, is that something you're really happy about? And also, how's KD doing after having an off night? Um. The uh, well, I don't know because um, you know yesterday was their day off, so I'll I'll, I'll know more today. He's he'll be fine. Um, he's a competitor, and uh, you know he he the the thing he's probably um, he, he'll he'll be fine. He'll be fine. Um, rebounding margin is important. Uh, obviously, we've got great size in the front line, and um, and so again, sometimes I'd rather take a bad shot than turn it over because at least it gives you a chance to get a rebound. Um, so uh, that's a real positive thing. And then, um, you know, Arkansas, uh, for example, they didn't really send many guys to the offensive glass. They really wanted to get back against our transition. And we continue to send people to the offensive glass. And we got some, as a result, we got rewarded with some rebounds. But as a result, we also gave up some fast breaks. So sometimes that's a trade-off. But rebounding, I think defense and rebounding win championships – and, you know, we defended and rebounded very well, well enough at Arkansas to win the game. Um, we just, we, you know, we, we fouled too much and we didn't make our free throws and no tape made big shots. All right, a follow-up question from Nebias Wilburn. Um, with everything being said, when it comes to defending or feeling like maybe when you go to the basket, you may not get the desired result, can that, lead to maybe settling for outside shots? If so, how do you correct that part of it? Well, you know, like, I'll just, let me, I don't know if this is your question, but let me speak to this. Um, so you could question Wendell's last shot. That's the easy thing for anybody and everybody to do. 
And that's what makes being a fan and being a writer or anything. That, that's part of the fun. That's, that's your job. Um, Wendell had made the same shot to put us up five about a minute and a half earlier. You know, in fact, that's sh the shot he got at the end was probably even cleaner. Um, so, I mean, I think Wendell makes that shot for me, clean open 40% of the time um, or so. So, um, you know, could we have gotten the ball to Jabari? Sure. Could we have gotten it to the basket like we did against Georgia? Maybe, you know, but um, I trust those. I trust those guys. If it goes in, it's not a bad shot. Um, you know, so uh, it's easy. You know, it's, it's obviously easy. Um, and look, I want my shooters to shoot. I want my scorers to score. I want my passers to pass. And so, um, you know, it's, uh, we, you know, we, we uh, I want my guys to go to their strengths. Talking a little trash on the field? Yeah, we get it. Trashing the state with litter? That's terrible. Keep it clean. Keep Alabama beautiful.